Am I the jerk for reporting my neighbor? Am I the asshole? I, 30 years old female, live in my first apartment alone in a complex. The walls in this building are incredibly thin. The neighbor I share a wall with is incredibly loud and noisy. I'll be going to bed around 10, 30, 11, and I will hear him loudly shouting at his TV or computer. He's very obviously gaming with his friends. I can hear everything he does from when he's moving dishes around to feeding his dogs. I leave him be. This specific neighbor and I had an issue about 10 months ago because he was lighting up the green leaves in his apartment. The smell makes me super sick, and it would waft and linger in my bedroom because of the shared wall. I left a polite note on his door, asking if he could take it outside as the smell makes me sick, and politely reminded him it's against our lease terms to even light up within 20 feet of the building. His response to the note was an F.U. Karen, and so I reported this to property management as my initial approach clearly meant nothing. Finally, the smell and smoke went away. Yesterday I received a note on my door that read, Sex too loud, please play music. This is not coming from my apartment, and I assumed the note came from my neighbor given the previous interaction. I responded to the note, that's not me, but I hear you all the time playing video games, and I leave you alone, and left the note on his doormat as it was left on mine. Last night at 10.30pm, I got up from bed to get a glass of water. There was a sudden and incessant banging on my door. Three loud bangs, then a pause, then repeat, pause, repeat, pause. I'm terrified. I'm home, alone, in the dark with someone banging on my door. After the third attempt it got quiet, and my neighbor's door slammed shut. I waited a few minutes and opened the door to the original note aggressively taped to my door with it saying, Hey Karen, you suck. This isn't me, but thanks. If you want to talk like an actual human let me know, otherwise I've off. I ended up reaching out to property management again and notifying them of how this situation has escalated. My last rent is due on July 1st, and I'm supposed to be out by 8.31, but now I just feel uncomfortable and wish I could leave sooner. Am I the asshole here? You are not the jerk. There's no reason you should have to deal with a neighbor who's behaving aggressively and violating lease terms. After his hostile response to your note, it makes perfect sense to involve property management. Stand your ground and don't be afraid to contact them again if he keeps causing trouble. Anyone saying you're in the wrong is just mistaken. Am I the jerk for not appreciating the surprise getaway my spouse planned? For the past month, my husband and I have been in a rut. We've been arguing about so many trivial things. Last week, he randomly asked me if I liked eating s'mores. I said I don't care for them and rarely do I ever crave them. He then asked me what I thought of cabins and camping. I told him I don't care for either, to be honest, and the only way I would go camping is if it was a glamping experience. He nodded and said noted. Today he tells me to be ready and dressed by 4pm because we have a date planned. I put on a cute outfit. He sees my outfit, doesn't say anything. The only thing I noticed that was odd was that he brought his backpack with him. I asked him why, and he said that he just wanted to put his hoodie somewhere in case it got cold later. We get into the car and 20 minutes into the drive, I ask him how far is the restaurant we're going to. He smiles and says, about an hour. I pull up my phone and start responding to some work emails to kill time. And then when we arrived at our destination, I honestly got so upset. It was a super tiny trailer in the middle of the West Virginia woods. There was a small picnic table outside and just woods. I ask him what we were doing there, and he turns to me and says, surprise. We're having a couple's retreat. Do you like it? I walk inside the trailer, and mind you my husband knows I am extremely claustrophobic. There is no room inside this trailer. I start panicking because A. I need physical space B. I'm in heels and a skirt in the middle of the woods. C. He packed PJs, his toothbrush, and a change of clothes but didn't think to tell me I'd be needing anything for this date. At that point, I just blatantly ask him, have I ever expressed any interest in camping to you? He said, no. And then I followed up with, you know how much I hate small spaces. What made you think I'd enjoy this? I just really want to understand. He didn't say anything. I told him I appreciated the gesture, but I could not for the life of me figure out how he thought planning this in the way he did was going to help get us out of a rut. This isn't the first time he's planned something for me that I hated. And the worst thing, I've told him before if I've never expressed interest in something to please not gift it to me or plan a date around it. I do a very good job at giving him extremely thoughtful gifts and planning him very thoughtful dates experiences. And today I told him that it just seems like there isn't any consideration for me in that regard. Am I the asshole for reacting the way that I did? I think you were not in the wrong here. It's bewildering how he planned a camping trip without hinting that dressing up for dinner was a problem and then didn't bring any essentials for you. It feels disrespectful and would piss anyone off. Honestly, it sounds like he set it up for you to look unreasonable when you got upset about his inconsiderateness. Am I the jerk for telling my partner that their ADHD is not an excuse? I live with my boyfriend of two years. We have pets that he is willing to feed most days as he understands the urgency of that chore. I currently work three jobs and clock in over 60 hours a week between work and full-time study. He has a part-time job and has multiple days off a week, but usually makes plans to hang out with friends on those days. He does not make enough for us to split bills or groceries equally, and the job is new, so previously I have been paying for everything solo. 
I would say it was a 90-10 split until recently, and now is more like 70-30. Usually when I am working, I take the time to leave him a list of a few things to do while I'm away. Nothing ridiculous, usually a load of washing and packing dry clothes away, defrosting meat so I can make dinner for us after work, walking our dog, etc. He has Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder ADHD, and repeatedly forgets to do things or says he will do them the next day, which leads to me doing them myself. I have explained that if I put something on his daily list, it's usually something I have already been meaning to do and have pushed back, so it's relatively urgent, or it's a daily task like washing that needs to happen every day. He will say something like, you don't have to cook dinner every night, if I was living by myself, I would just eat cereal and be fine or something about vacuuming etc. Not being urgent. I have recently been keeping track, I would say on average, if I give him 4 15 minute tasks to complete on his day off. He routinely forgets at least one if not two of those tasks, often with the excuse that he was hanging out with friends and didn't get time. It all came to a head today. I got home from work, I took an afternoon off to visit my sister who has just had a baby, and he was working this evening, starting at 5 and finishing around 8. When I got home, there was a massive pile of clothes on our bed that he had been putting off packing away for at least 3 or 4 days and just adding dry washing to. Also, he left our bedroom door open and our dog had destroyed a new pair of shoes I got 2 days ago. He also hadn't taken meat out of the freezer, so we had nothing for dinner and the sink was full of dishes. Apparently he had friends over this morning. I called him and left a voicemail saying he is a selfish prick and he needs to start pulling his weight or I am leaving. I told him to get the bus home and not drive my car anymore. He called back apologizing and begging me to forgive him but also said it wasn't his fault that he made plans today and said he would do the chores tomorrow. I'm staying with my parents tonight. Info. He is not medicated and has not tried to be. We have discussed it and he went to a doctor and discussed it but never got around to seeing anyone about it properly. Nothing you have done here makes me think you are the jerk. You work three jobs on top of studying, cooking and carrying the mental load, while he works part-time and hangs out with friends. You deserve someone who will at least throw you a life preserver instead of watching you struggle to keep your head above water. He loves the lifestyle you provide him more than he cares about what it's doing to you. Right now he's taking advantage of you and it's not sustainable if it only ever favors one side. Am I the jerk for prioritizing my dog's recovery over visitors? My husband and I just welcomed our first child four days ago. My husband and I also have a five-year-old dachshund, Oliver, who we are completely obsessed with. Oliver gets regular allergy shots and had an appointment on Monday which I had planned to take him to, but obviously that changed when the baby arrived. I asked my parents, we live in a two-family home with them, to bring him for his appointment. While in the waiting room of the vet's office, he was attacked by a much larger dog and sustained serious injuries. He was rushed into surgery immediately. The entire thing was so traumatic. Finding out he was injured while I was away in the hospital was one of the worst moments of my life. I made my husband go and be there at the vet's office while I waited anxiously in the hospital. Luckily, he pulled through and is recovering as well as possible, but he has a long road to recovery. I was discharged the next day, and he was able to come home yesterday. Having a baby in the house is a huge adjustment for us all, including Oliver, though he has been shocking us with how well he's doing, especially while in the midst of recovery. It has been really hard for my husband and me to make sure everyone's needs are met, but we're managing with some help from my parents. However, one thing that's causing a lot of stress is visitors. Oliver gets extremely excited to see anyone who comes over, and we have been instructed to keep him quiet and calm right now so that he can heal. Additionally, we are exhausted from taking care of both. When our daughter is napping, we spend all our time with him as he recovers. We decided that right now is not the time to have visitors. But we've gotten some nasty replies from family, saying we're prioritizing a dog over our daughter's relationship with her family. She's a newborn, she doesn't know any different, and these aren't immediate family members, and that they can't believe would put a dog over them. They tell me I'll be a bad mom for prioritizing Oliver, and that breaks my heart because I love my baby so much. But I also love Oliver to death too. My in-laws live out of state and will meet the baby in July, so the people being pushed off aren't grandparents. They're my husband's siblings and aunts and uncles on both sides. If it weren't for Oliver's injuries, we probably would allow select visitors with certain precautions, but he is our first baby, and we want to make this time as stress-free for him. Am I the a-hole for putting visitors on the back burner during this time? Nothing you have done here makes me think you are the jerk here. And this isn't evidence you are a bad mom, it's evidence you will be a great one. You and your husband are working as a team and putting both of the helpless creatures in your care first. Your house, your baby, your dog, your rules. Congratulations on the arrival of your little one and wishing Oliver a swift recovery. Would I be the asshole for saying my family member's child can't be in their wedding? I don't like my husband's youngest sister. She is the baby and acts like a brat. Everyone coddles caters to her. I have seen her throw tantrums, flip out on family, make her mom cry, and pout because she didn't get her way, lost at a game, etc. Thankfully she lives 3.5 hours away. 
I like my mother-in-law and other sister-in-law. Diel. We'll call the one getting married Tia. I was fine with them being a flower girl despite the logistics stressing me out. The wedding is 3.5 hours away. We need to go up the night before, for the rehearsal and set up the next day. The wedding is at 5 p.m. It would be a long day for M. She's shy around big groups. I doubt she'll walk down the aisle when it's time. At my wedding, I had my nieces as flower girls. The three-year-old was excited until it was time, and then freaked out. Her mom carried her. Tia later commented that it ruined it. Tia also took control of things I asked not to happen. After the ceremony we had pictures. Food was to be put out for guests. I didn't want them waiting on us. Tia knew that but still told people they had to wait for us, and she would dismiss them by table. When we returned, I was annoyed and told people to get food. Tia got upset and said she was dismissing them. During the bouquet toss my cousin caught it. Tia ripped it from her hands. Tia's now fiancé got upset for the way she acted. My maid of honor witnessed him telling Tia that wasn't cool, and Tia threw the bouquet at his face and stomped off. Back to the point. We found out the wedding is kid-free. They want to party without kids. That's fine and dandy. I love a night off from being a mom. Tia said she expects N to leave after the ceremony, that I should get my mom to come or bring our babysitter who could stay with her at the Airbnb. My mom doesn't want to. She'll have the other two kids since they aren't in the wedding. She doesn't want to make the drive. My babysitter has a prior commitment. I told my mother-in-law and Tia that M was not going to be in the wedding, or my husband and I would leave early. They are upset. They want me to find someone else. They suggested Tia find someone where she lives. I said no. Outside of family, only our babysitter has ever stayed with them. I am picky. The wedding is two months away. I could look for someone, but I don't want to. My husband agrees that the best solution is for M to stay with my parents, but he won't tell them. So am I the jerk if I say M won't be in the wedding? You are not the jerk. It's completely ridiculous and rude to demand a person's child as a prop. If you want a child-free wedding or reception, don't include children in your wedding party and tell their parents to figure it out. Your husband needs to take the lead on communicating with his problematic family members, including his sister and mother. Am I the jerk for asking my partner to do their responsibilities? Before we got married, we decided that I would be the sole earner, responsible for finances and taxes, while she would be a housewife, taking care of the kids and household duties. We agreed she would never work, and I wouldn't ask her to either. In the first two years of our marriage, we didn't have kids. I worked from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sometimes she would wake up and make me breakfast, sometimes she wouldn't. On days she made breakfast, she would also pack me lunch. On days she didn't wake up early, I would eat both breakfast and lunch at work. She would wake up around 12 2 p.m., do household chores, and wait for me to come home. We would have dinner together and spend time going out for movies, dinners, or visiting friends, at least twice a week. This year, we had a baby. I took one month of leave to help her, which is the maximum my job allows. After my leave, her parents stayed with us for two months, helping with the baby. I supported all the household bills during this time. After they left, our baby was three months old, and this is when issues began. My wife was used to her previous routine of waking up late and now found it difficult to manage caring for the baby and household chores. I offered to help by cleaning the first floor of our house and putting our baby to bed several times a week, despite working from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., handling all immigration paperwork, taxes, bills, and grocery shopping, since she doesn't drive. However, every day I come home, she seems angry or upset, often taking it out on me. Sometimes it's about the baby. Sometimes it's about me not helping enough around the house. Today, we had an argument where I asked why she was consistently struggling with her responsibilities. I acknowledged that she had an easier life in the first two years of our marriage because she didn't work, but reminded her that we had planned for this baby and understood it would require more work. We had agreed she would be the primary caretaker and housewife, but now, she would not stop complaining and we can't stop having fights. Am I the asshole for asking her to fulfill her share of the household responsibilities? It sounds like questioning her struggles with responsibilities wasn't the best approach. A new baby is incredibly demanding, and it's only been a few months since she gave birth. It's important to consider the overwhelming nature of postpartum life and offer support instead of judgment. Maybe focus less on the chores and more on being a supportive partner during this tough time. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.